Well, he sounds uh, very confident. Sounds like uh, divestment is easy and profitable. Let's ask an expert about this now. Uh, Sasha Müller-Krenner is in the studio with us today and he's the director of Environmental Action Germany. Good to have you with us. Well, thank you for having me. Okay, divestment seems like a good idea, profitable, easy to implement. Is it useful? Does it do the job? Well, it's not profitable for everyone to start with. Uh, there are a lot of municipalities or funds that have invested in coal and now those companies are losing value, so it's difficult to sell them. But in the long term, it's definitely profitable to invest in the technologies of the future, like wind and solar as opposed to coal. And it's obviously useful too, because this is exactly what we have to do to address the climate issue. Okay, well, the climate issue, of course, uh, is uh, top of everyone's agenda next week at the UN Climate Summit. High expectations there, but we've had high expectations in the past. What do you think this next summit will actually achieve? Well, what this summit has to do is to give a long-term signal that the age of fossil fuels is over, that the age of renewable energy begins and therefore, thereby gives a signal to governments, but also to the corporate sector to invest in the right stuff. And of course, profitability is uh, quite an incentive. Uh, Allianz, uh, Insurer Allianz, we mentioned it earlier, has decided to pull its assets out of uh, the coal industry. Uh, obviously, climate uh, protection has to be profitable, otherwise it doesn't work. It definitely has to be profitable. When you look at a company like Allianz, they have rules to invest uh, in safe investment because they have to pay back the premiums to the people who hold their insurances there. And therefore, they really calculate what's profitable in the long term. And uh, we've made sure technologically that wind and solar prices have come down, so they are now the most profitable investments. Well, and of course, time is uh, running out. In the meantime, we've got some very interesting satellite pictures here uh, from NASA, which uh, show rising levels of greenhouse gases in various parts of the world. We see it here in time-lapsed images. CO2 emissions change over the course of the year. They're especially high in winter, especially in the industrialized countries in the Northern Hemisphere. The biggest emitter we can see is China. Its output of greenhouse gas emissions has almost tripled over the past decade. Asian giants followed by the US and India is also increasingly pumping CO2 into the air. And Germany, by the way, isn't doing too well either. Looking at this, do you think Think that this famous two degree target can actually be achieved? Well, the two degree target will not be achieved with what we decide in Paris, uh, but it's still a valid target because this is not a political target, it's a target that is based on science. Science tells us that this is a threshold that we cannot cross, uh, not to interfere with the climate system in a dangerous way. Therefore, it's kind of homework for us after Paris uh, to reconvene and to say what we did not manage to do in Paris uh, uh, in energy policy, electricity production, in transport, in heat, we have to do in the next steps. So it's, uh, uh, we have a work cut out for the next decade or so. For the next decade. All right, well, that's a very clear answer here. Sasha Müller-Krenner, thank you very much for being here in the studio with us. Thank you.